All right, so you made your base. You've got your spokes glued in. The next step is to start weaving up the sides. You're gonna need extra tubes for this. So if you haven't made extra, you'll want to make a few extra now. I think it takes me um, 18 inches to get around my basket maybe once and a half. You could go ahead and do the math for it, um, but you could also just keep making tubes as you go along. Your basket will total six inches tall. So once you've reached six inches, then you can start stop weaving and you'll move on to the video for finishing your basket. So we've got our basket here. The first thing that you will probably want to do once you have your basket is bend all of your spokes up. I found this was a lot easier to have your spokes bent up. Um, although the more that you work them around, um, the more they are going to be kind of floppy. Um, and if they get too floppy, they might rip. So those of you who are at home, you can see this really easy on my camera. I've got quite a bit of masking tape here holding my basket together. And that's okay if you have to do that too. Your first round, if all of your basket spokes are down, this is what it looks like. Okay, so you have a spoke that we glued in, that 16th one on an angle, and it goes over your first spoke. So then it needs to go under the second. Some of you have already started this. You kind of have a, an idea of what you need to do. But once you force that piece that you're weaving around in, it's going to lift that spoke up. If you find that the piece that you're weaving with is really tight and it doesn't want to bend, just kind of like pre-bend it. Pre-work that piece of paper, whether it's magazine paper or it's newspaper, just really kind of curl it around so that the fibers of the paper kind of break just a little bit. If it's too straight, it's going to be really hard for you to work with. So you want it to have a bend to it. Just naturally, you want it to do this. It makes it easier to go around in. Okay, to make this clear and really easy to understand, I have a diagram here. So this is your center circle, and each of these numbered double lines is one of your spokes. You also have this piece that is sticking out diagonally. If you don't have this piece sticking out diagonally, glue it in right now. Um, just kind of add some glue and, and shove it between your two layers. It needs to come out diagonally at a 45 degree angle to spoke one. You can choose what spoke one is on your own. But then it's going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, all the way around the basket. So it's already over spoke one. So it's going to go under spoke two and then over spoke two three, under spoke four, over spoke five, under spoke six, over seven, under eight, over nine. I think you get the gist here. Um, Every odd numbered spoke, it's going to go over. Every even numbered spoke, it's going to go under, at least for your first round. So then you're going to get around to 13, goes under 14, it goes over 15, and then it goes back to 1. But here, if we follow our pattern, it goes under 1. It has previously gone over 1, so that's perfect. Your second row should be the opposite of the row below it. If it's not opposite of the row below it, then you did something wrong and you need to take it apart and go over it again. So this diagram, although um, really shows you how you're supposed to go around your spokes, your like paper read can't be this far away from your center circle. You'll see how I weave mine in the video demonstration that's coming right up. Your first row sometimes is pretty difficult um, unless your paper is pretty bent up. So I went under this one, so I go over that one, 
under this one. And this is where you might find that your spokes, those pieces that come out from the center circle are breaking. So just be careful about that and watch to make sure that they don't rip off. If they do rip off, tape them back on because it's going to cause an issue with your pattern. So work your way around the circle. You want to try and force your spiral to be as close to the edge of your circle as possible. You don't want it to be like really far out. You don't want it to curl in because if it comes in on your circle, then your basket's going to come in like a triangle. If there's a huge gap, your basket's going to bow out like a bowl, which is something that you can work with later. But right now, your basket should just go straight up. Also, keep that first row as close, like vertically down along the circle as possible. You do not want it to have a big gap between the bottom of your basket and where your paper that you're working with is actually like falling. So push it in and push it down. While you're working, if you need to use a clothespin to help you clip things together, it's okay to have a couple of them going around your basket. That just helps to hold your paper reed in place. Sometimes if you need to, um, I like to actually turn it on its side and rotate it around instead of having it stand up. Although quite a few of the students liked having it stand up um, as they were working along. Just make sure that you're going under, over, under, over, under, over. And when you get back to the beginning, your pattern should be opposite of the row below, but it should continue on um, as one continuous spiral. Let me show you how to add a new strip. Although I know a lot of you saw this yesterday. So I have my paper here and it has a little hole on the side. I've got a strip already, actually I'll use this one. I've got a strip already made up. What I'm going to do is before I even use this in my paper basket, I'm gonna flatten it out and let it kind of curl. Oh, I ripped it, that's all right, I'll fix it later. So I'm bending my paper reed, getting it to pre-curl so that it already starts to have that idea or that memory of you need to stay curled. You need to keep curling. And then I'll glue it into this opening here. All right, so get some glue in that opening. Slide the skinny part of your new piece into it. And then I like to just press it and hold it for a couple seconds. That way it stays and it doesn't slide out. And then you can just keep on weaving. Make sure that your basket paper reed is close to the row below it. You don't wanna have any gaps. So those of you who are at home, you can see this pretty easily when I zoom in. A lot of you will find that you have gaps in between your rows you want to push it down to avoid those gaps. That's gonna make a really nice tight finished basket. Craftsmanship is key here. Okay, so continue working around your basket, adding spokes, or not adding spokes, continue working around your basket, adding more paper as you go along, your paper read, and keep spiraling it up. All right, so just keep weaving until your basket stands six inches tall from the very bottom of your basket to the top row. So at that point, you should have a basket that's, you know, your spokes are taller than six inches. If they're not taller than six inches, just add a new tube into the spoke and keep weaving until you get six inches of woven basket. Once you have that and it's good craftsmanship, you're going to watch the next video on finishing your basket.